Welcome to Cell and Molecular Biology. As the name suggests, in this course, we will focus on the study of life at the cellular level. So to begin that study, we will first, uh, in this video, we will first address the question, what is a cell? Then we will discuss the history that led up to the development of the cell theory. And finally, we'll end by describing some basic characteristics of cells. By the end of this video, you should be able to state the parts of the cell theory, as well as name some characteristics associated with living cells. So here we see several different types of cells. We see red blood cells, a neuron, we see bacteria, algae, and budding yeast. Each of these cells is very different and highly specialized to perform very specific functions. However, they all have something in common, and that's because cells are the smallest unit that retains all of the properties of life. So many scientists help to um, understand what we know about cells today, first beginning with Robert Hooke shown here. Robert Hooke was the first to name cells because he looked at cork and plants through a light microscope. And you can see here that if you look at cork, you see this cellulose structure that he thought looked a great deal like a monk's cell. So he gave these the name cellulae, which means small room. Next, Anton van Leeuwenhoek used his microscope to describe many moving cells, such as protist, the sperm cells you see here, as well as bacteria. Next, we have three scientists who were focused on the study of the nucleus. Robert Brown was the first to discover the nucleus. Matthias Schleiden found that the nucleus controls cellular development. And Theodore Schwann found that all animal and plant cells contain nuclei. And finally, Rudolf Virchow found that cells arise from other cells by cell division. So the work of these scientists and many others led to the development of what is now known as the cell theory in the mid-19th century. And the cell theory states that, first, all organisms are composed of one or more cells. Second, the cell is the smallest unit that has all of the properties of life. And third, that cells arise only from pre-existing cells. And now, from this cell theory, we can describe some basic characteristics associated with living cells. First, cells carry hereditary information. This hereditary information is carried in the DNA. Cells can respond to stimuli. Now, this is a little different from the stimulus shown here, touching a hot stove, but cells clearly respond to changes in their environment, such as changes in heat, changes in light, changes in their food source, and many other stimuli. Cells also direct the manufacture of many macromolecules. These can include proteins, lipids, nucleic acids, and carbohydrates. And cells can manufacture these molecules um, and use them as the building blocks of life. Cells also require some source of energy. As we know, ultimately, for most organisms, this energy ultimately comes from the sun. However, all cells require some form of energy. And finally, cells can reproduce to form other cells. Here we see a fission yeast, and you can see that the piece of the cell wall called the septum is being built between these two cells to divide them into separate cells. So all cells have some mechanism to reproduce. So now you should know a little bit about the cell theory and a little bit about the basic characteristics of cells. And I look forward to seeing you in class. This is the end of the video.